Hello, you guys. I am back. I was having some internet trouble, so that's why I was going in and out a lot, but I think it has fixed itself. I was saying before how my my download speed was like 230 or something, and then my upload speed was uh, 0.25, and then it went up to 2, and now it's at 11. So I don't know what's going on with my internet today. It's trying to give me the... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's trying to pull the wool over my eyes, I guess. It's like, oh, she needs the upload speed because she's trying to, you know, stream. So we might as well give it to her. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, everyone cross your fingers for me, but <laughs> that, um, that this internet will continue to have 11 upload speed. 11 what, you might ask? Uh, I think it's like MBSP or something. I don't, I don't know the acronym for it, let alone what it means. Uh, but I think 11's good. <laughs> Even, uh, when I did, I do, like, the internet speed test online, because I'm like, oh, that, you know, that makes sense to me, and then they tell you afterwards what the numbers mean, if it's very fast, you know, internet speed, or just fast, or slow, it tells you online. And, uh, even with the, like, the 230 download speed and the .25 upload speed, they're like, you're all set. You're good. <laughs> you're good. Just don't. Don't try to upload anything. Don't try to communicate with anyone. But you can download whatever you want. I'm like, nah. Nah, that's <laughs> that's not what I want right now. I want I want all of the upload speed. I don't need a uh, download speed right now. I need upload. Anyways. <laughs> it's uh my internet's very uh out there. But uh at least we're back. Anyways, what was I saying? Uh, we are, are... I'll repeat myself since I think the, the stream before was too jarbled for anyone to understand me. But uh, we made it to, like, the start of the snowy area last time. It was still considered Bargainburg, so we're not in the snowy area yet. Because I heard there's wind or something that's really annoying in this next part. Um, but we made it to the part where there's a tower and there's a little pole and then you have to jump onto that pole and it's like a really specific jump that you have to do. After that part, it's like these snowy steps. We made it to the snowy steps part and I was super proud of myself for that. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to make it to the snowy steps, but we did. We, we certainly did. So now I want to make it to the even snowier part of Jump King. I think that would be a good a good goal to set for myself for today. I also pointed out that uh, we have over 2,000 falls, so <laughs> I was looking at my stats. We can actually look at them right now. Uh, 2,189 falls now. So falling no longer phases me. I have... Uh, What's it called? Transcended. That's the word I'm looking for. I have transcended all, um, you know, annoyance from falling. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> you saw that fall there? Didn't even phase me. I know. Amazing. I have superhuman powers to not get annoyed. Because <laughs> it just gives me a chance to practice these, uh, these different areas some more. That's how I like to think of it. <laughs> so, we're back in the kitchen. It's reminding me of this one, uh, this one song I used to hear as a kid. Um, like, Cooking in the Kitchen with Maya. Like, Cooking in the Kitchen with... Maya. Or is it somebody's in the kitchen? You know, I'm not quite sure, but that, that jingle just kind of started off in my head. I, I have the predisposition to remember jingles more than like the actual lyrics of songs, but I think that's common for, for a lot of people. <laughs> Even though there's, there are a couple songs where I just remember the lyrics, but I don't know how the song goes at all. So... If you just say the lyrics out loud without, like, any sort of beat whatsoever, it's very hard for people to determine what song you're actually singing. I think you have a better chance of people guessing what song you're thinking of if you actually just know the jingle, I feel. I think that's more of a, 
I don't know, that's something that most most people will remember more often, I think, is the jingle more so than the actual lyrics of a song. So anyways, it's like cook cooking in the kitchen or something. It's like a it's like a kid song. I don't remember who sang it to me. But it's maybe it was like on uh <laughs> it wouldn't be on Kids Bop, I don't think. <laughs> it wasn't an actual bop. I think it was like some sort of nursery rhyme or something. There we go. There we go. Now we're back. Wait, I shouldn't say anything yet. Now we're back to Berg. Bargenberg. Bergenberg. There's a place in uh, Bloodborne right now. Uh, Dying Camel and I are co-op streaming that on Sunday. There's a place in Bloodborne that we're at right now. And it sounds a lot like Bargenberg. I think it's like Bergville or something. <laughs> It's very, it's a very similar name. It could be the same, same place. <laughs> In which case, I never remember on Sundays where exactly Camel and I left off in Bloodborne. He, he has like the greatest memory compared to me. Cause I just, I, I don't remember anything. I think it's like part of me is just trying to forget all of the horrendous monsters we fought so far. So I just end up kind of uh, blocking out the, you know, the big baddies that uh, we fight in Bloodborne. And I also, ever since I started playing Bloodborne, it wasn't Dark Souls that started this. Started, you know, this particular saying I'm going to say. But uh, it wasn't Dark Souls 3 that started people saying this. Uh, it was Bloodborne. I totally butchered that sentence. But, uh... <laughs> Um, now whenever someone wants to play a horror game with me, they're like, Sierra, like, you play Bloodborne. Like, that's, that's as scary as it gets. I'm like, I don't think that's how that works, exactly. So I've been playing things like, like, Gears 5, and I don't know. That, that game's bloody, but I guess Bloodborne is as well. I just don't, I just don't notice it as much, I guess. <laughs> I guess I just, I just don't notice it as much. But yeah, so, spoiler alert, I started playing uh, Gears 5. I don't know why they uh, don't call it Gears of War anymore. I guess they're trying a new, uh, something new by not calling it Gears of War. Uh, but uh, Gears 5 is the only Gears game I've ever played. And uh, I'm doing it co-op with my boyfriend right now. And I play the robot character, which is like... <laughs> Not even, obviously it's not a human, so I don't need to shoot anything. I just, like, fly around being a droid and, like, electrocuting people. It's like Gears of War, except, like, super easy mode, I'd like to think. <laughs> and I'm the worst robot, too. There's a lot of sections in Gears 5 where I'm supposed to do a specific action to, like, help the humans go forward, but I'm just zooming around, uh, you know, seeing everything from up above. I am, uh, not a great robot companion. I can confirm that now. <laughs> you would not want me as a droid. I'd be too distracted all the time, finally being able to fly what and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I played, like, about an hour of it last night. And it was, it was pretty good. It's not, like, the most unique story in the world, but the characters are, like, super human. <laughs> Not like superpowers, but uh, they have like really, uh, they have really good personalities. And you know, you can't say that about a lot of games. In a lot of games, they're all like about business and stuff. But uh, Gears 5, the characters are very, very human-like. And they talk like, you know, <laughs> any, any person like you and I would. But with better grammar. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that Gears 5 is impressive. And I also like electrocuting people as a droid and uh, blowing their heads up, so there's that, too. I think I'm just desensitized to uh, video game gore. I think that's what it is. It's not that I'm not scared, because I am, but I guess the, the blood and gore doesn't phase me anymore. And also, I did just play Maneater on this channel, where I swam around as a shark and ate people, so... <laughs> I guess that also means that I, you know, don't mind 
blood and gore as much anymore. It's just like when the atmosphere is spooky, then I can't handle it. Like if it like if the game makes you feel claustrophobic or if the music is especially creepy or something like that. Especially if there's jump scares, I just I can't deal. <laughs> That's like a big a big no for me. In which case, I hope that uh, Camel and I never play Resident Evil. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't want to play it. I can't. It's a little too spooky for me. There we go. Got through that, that little doorway there. I feel like I'm building from the ground up every time I play. <laughs> but I must be getting better in like a small way. And it's, it's cool to see that kind of progress. It's completely, you know, skill-based. So today, after I play this game, I think I'm also going to stream a little bit of Magic Pen Gel. You know, uh, I still want to beat it. I think we're really close to beating it, uh, because we're at, like, the final boss, the Doodle King. As far as I remember, I could be wrong, and there could be a little bit more involved with the story, but I don't think I'm wrong. A lot of PS2 games are, like, you know, pretty darn short, which is, like, strange to me. You know, like, the whole game's, like, eight hours or something. And I'm, like, not used to that. <laughs> I keep thinking that all games have to be, like, a 40-hour experience, even though that's not true. I try to, like, equate it as to, like... I, I used to think that in for me to buy a game, I should at least get like I should at least get an hour worth of playtime for every dollar I spent. So if I paid you know sixty dollars for you know a full priced title, I should get at least you know sixty hours of playtime out of it. And for the most part, I think I think you do. Usually it's like forty hours though, but close close enough, I guess. <laughs> I'm definitely getting the money's worth on this game. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I made the mistake of uh, looking at uh, how long it took my friends to play this game. And I think it's like 20 or 30 hours. And I'm at 12 now. So I'm getting a little bit nervous. <laughs> I know it's not a competition. You're going to be saying, Sierra, it's not a competition. But it is. I need to, <laughs> I need to be the Jump King. What's the point of playing this game if you can't be a better Jump King than your friends? <laughs> of course, I I only partly mean that. <laughs> but I feel like this game's going to take me like 30 hours. So I'll be in the, you know, the further quadrant of friends who played this game. There's a really loud bird outside. There's birds in the game. There's birds outside. There's been this one crow lately that's been, like, stalking my house, and he'll just crow all morning long. He, I think he thinks he's a morning dove or something, and every morning he'd be like, caw, caw, but, like, for hours. So between, like, seven and I would say ten, seven to ten, three hours straight, this bird, this crow, will just be cawing, cawing and cawing until the sun fully raises. But on cloudy days, I don't know if he, he knows what time it is, so usually it's a little bit longer for the crowing. <laughs> but now we got, a, we got a different bird to take its place, so there isn't a crow cawing, but I, I don't know. I, I don't really know the names of my birds, but it's definitely not a crow that I'm hearing right now. <laughs> it's a little bit of a better sound, so I can, I can handle it. I wish you guys could hear this bird. Maybe somebody else can identify it for me then. <laughs> but he's really, he's really singing. So, I don't know if I ever mentioned this on stream before, but uh, the area I live in, when I was growing up, I don't really hear it as much anymore, which is kind of sad, but uh, instead of waking up to like birds in the morning, uh, when I was growing up, I've lived in the same area for a lot of my life, so in uh, California. So in this particular area of California, there's a lot of peacocks. 
So every morning I'd get waken up by the sound of a peacock, like screeching, I think would be the best, uh, the best verb for a, a peacock's uh, sound that it makes. It sounds like screeching. It sounds like a cat is got his tail stepped on. That's what a, that is what a peacock sounds like. So it'd be like, <laughs> but like all morning. And that's just uh, how the peacocks would wake up every morning. Sometimes I hear it. Um, sometimes they make that sound like in the afternoon. There's still quite a few peacocks around if I go on like certain hiking trails, which is pretty cool. Not a lot of people can say that there's like peacocks running all over your neighborhood. But uh, I don't know. There's a lot less than usual. So it's been making me kind of concerned for them. But I don't, I don't know if I miss the the screaming sound that the peacocks make. They look so beautiful, but their their sound is so... Uh, <laughs> so concerning. Oh, I thought for sure we were going to miss that. There we go. Very nice. Oh, not not as nice. That's okay. There's a lot of steps here, so I'm not I'm not too worried. Maybe I should be, but I'm not. <laughs> All right. So this is the area I was talking about before that I've that I've got into. It's like two or three screens above that. That's the furthest I've gotten. I'm trying to figure out if I can full jump anywhere here. I don't think so, though. Hmm. Actually, maybe if I stand really close to the wall, I can. Gotta look for those sweet full jumps. Oh, <laughs> or just slide down to the bottom. That works, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> All right, we'll get back there. No worries, no worries. But yeah, when I was growing up, there were peacocks everywhere. And, uh, they would be all over the school, too. I don't know. I guess peacocks can fly a little bit. Um, they kind of just jump and then, you know, if they're on a hill, they can, like, kind of glide, I guess. They don't fly, like, up in the air like a crow does, obviously. But they can get over, like, fences and stuff like that, I guess. So they'd just be, like, when I was going to school, there'd be a bunch of peacocks everywhere. It was really cool. It was... It was, uh, quite a unique experience. <laughs> and we'd, uh, you know, be told not to feed the peacocks and whatnot. I don't think we ever had any issues with the peacocks. All the kids were, like, just really, um, I guess excited about the peacocks. So we never had any issues with, uh, living with the peacocks. Oh, come on. There we go. Ah, oh, keep holding down the jump button too long for that. I swear I knew how to do it before. <laughs> we'll get plenty of a uh, chance to practice. Wow, what a fall that was. How many screens was that? Four or five? I don't know if I've made that particular fall before. I need an achievement for every different type of fall I can do. <laughs> how many screens can you fall in a row? There needs to be a mode where everything's upside down, I think, and uh, you're just trying to get back to the bottom. I think that would be a good mode. <laughs> I know, look at me just laying out all these million dollar ideas here. <laughs> I know there's one DLC for this game. I don't know if there's two or not. And then on the menu it says that there's other babes, but I'm too afraid to click on that button because I don't want to see the first babe. I don't know. I, I know the story is that I'm a jump king and I'm trying to get to the babe 
all the way at the top of whatever you call this. This tower? I don't know. Um, but I don't know what the babe looks like, nor do I know if the babe is real. Also, the babe sounds really mean because I've met some characters who have said, said like, that the babe was mean. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm half expecting to find something horrendous when I get to the top. <laughs> or at least just like a really like snooty princess or something. It's kind of like uh, if Mario went to go save the princess and like did all of these like hard journeys and you know went to all these different castles to find the princess and he couldn't find the princess and as soon as he found Princess Peach, Princess Peach is like, ew, no. I feel like that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> or she'll kick you like all the way back down again. Oh my gosh. That would break my little heart, I think. I <laughs> I really hope I'm not right. I hope I didn't just guess the ending. That she, like, finds a way to Spartan kick, <laughs> kick you all the way back down to the bottom. <laughs> and she'll be like, you did it once, you can do it again. Hiya! That would just be... Yeah, that would not be good. <laughs> if that happens, I'll have to say that this game is the, the Dark Souls of platformers. And actually mean it. Alright, so... We have to jump enough, but not too much. You feel me? Okay, I don't know what's up here, I forget. Oh, right, okay. I jumped this way. Usually I'm really good at that part, I promise. <laughs> Just not today. Also, what makes this part of the roof, you know, standable, but the other roofs are not? That's my question. We need to get sturdier boots for Jump King so we can actually jump on all surfaces. That's what I need. Alright, so this is the tower I was talking about previously. And we've gone in, like, a couple screens above this point. Here we go. Oh, that was too much. That was too much! <laughs> Alright, that was way too much. Oh, Great Frontier. So we are in the new area. Got it. I thought we were still in Bargainburg for some reason. So yes, we are in the Great Frontier now. <laughs> no. I don't know what to do once I get here. Can you... Oh, okay. The right side is the right way to go, I think. Okay. Wow, I'm very impressed with myself. <laughs> I gotta say. I can't full jump there. I have to do like some sort of weird jump. There we go. Okay, this, the one, the screen above this one I think is the furthest I've gotten. It's not even that the I don't know. I want to say that the jumps aren't so hard, but I guess something about the jumps must be difficult if I'm stuck on them. The platforms are just so small, I guess. That's that's the issue I'm having currently. Yeah! <laughs> okay. It's always that spot, too. At least this uh, flag thing can catch me as long as I don't overjump it. Better to underjump here than overjump. <laughs> I say as I overjump. Alright, that's fine. We're still good. We're still in the green. 
We're not in the green. We are opposite of green. We're in the red. Alright, there we go. Hello, Great Frontier. So, I started watching... Sorry, I'm like half focusing, half talking. I started watching uh, Community. And I've only seen a couple episodes of it. But I started watching it from like the beginning. Uh, season 1. And it is really good. I didn't, I didn't even know until someone pointed it out to me. But I guess Dan Harmon was like the, the writer for the first four seasons. Color me surprised. But I think that's why the, the first season is so good so far. I've seen, like, episodes here and there, but I just recently started getting into it. Oh. There we go. Oh! <laughs> Alright. Back to square one. I, I think when I look at the background of birds flying around, I'm assuming they are all crows. Even though I don't I don't think crows gather in such big formations. That's a little concerning. But um, those crows and their cawing remind me of uh, <laughs> Monster Rancher 4 where I'm running around in that cave with those bats following me. And like they just keep uh, making rustling noises and following me around. I know these crows aren't following me, but... Since I can't leave this area, it's kind of like they are. <laughs> I I blame the crows. Oh. Alright, good stuff, good stuff. We're going to be passing that little DLC area. Thankfully, somebody told me that this was a DLC area, or else I totally would have went for it. <laughs> I don't think I need the extra challenge, though. This is challenge enough for me, I think. Woo! There we go. Very nice. I'm still trying to work on my issue where I hold down the directional key, even after jumping. Because I know it doesn't make a difference, but I feel like... It will throw me a little bit more in the right direction, even though that's that's a wrong assumption. I feel like I need to be doing something while my character is jumping. So sometimes I walk off platforms because of that. <laughs> Alright, I'm back here again. Hello, tower. Wait, what is that called? It's not a tower, it's more of like a... Like a... Like a fort? No, not even a fort. I don't know what to call that. The, the flagpole, I guess. We meet again, flagpole. Haha! -ha. I've gotten pretty good at making that jump. Gotta give myself props. Props. <laughs> okay, don't throw yourself too hard here. Gotta time it just right. Okay, this is the jump. That is the new jump that we need to pass. <laughs> oh no, I walked! I did that thing I said I wouldn't do. Hmm. Alright. <laughs> did I learn my lesson? No. I have a severe problem with holding down the directional pad. <laughs> I'm practicing letting it go right now. Alright, old man didn't talk to me. That's good luck, I think. Every time he does talk to me, I fall all the way back down to the sewer, so. <laughs> so I think it's good luck if he doesn't. False King's Keep. Never read the title before.
So yesterday I went on a walk and I decided that I was going to count something while I was walking. And <laughs> when I was walking, I decided to count how many creepy, creepy dolls are inside cars because there's this car in my neighborhood and uh, it has a creepy doll in it in the passenger seat. And this car hasn't been moved in a while because it has cobwebs on it. So it was especially creepy. So I was just trying to figure out how many, you know, dolls in, in cars I could find. And I found a grand total of two. It's, it was pretty amazing. It was a very specific thing I was trying to look for during my walk because I hate walking and I need to distract myself while I'm walking. And uh, apparently there's two people in my vicinity, in my area, that have uh, creepy dolls in their cars. And the car never moves, so I don't know. I think, I think there might be some hauntings going on. Some haunted cars. Oh my gosh. I would totally pay to watch a haunted car show. <laughs> Sorry, that just came into my head. A haunted car reality show. Yes. And then the answer is they just need to see if their car, car is recalled. And it's not a haunting after all. Or they could just move the doll out of their car. Anyways, I'm getting off track. It was, I don't know, it was some weird dolls, like some Frankenstein kind of dolls. I don't understand why some people like, you know, tearing dolls apart and then stitching them back together with different bodies and heads. I don't, I don't know, call me crazy, call me old fashioned, but uh, that stuff <laughs> creeps me out. <laughs> And there's two different people. I don't know, maybe it's the same person with different cars that live uh, like a mile away from each other. But there's two different people I have found that have the same kind of creepy doll in their car. The Franken doll. I don't know. It's, it's, it's very strange. Very creepy. There's also a lot of cars just around. I don't know if you guys go on many like walks around your neighborhood or not. I, I find that it's a nice way to like kind of relax and uh, get out of the house most importantly so I don't go stir crazy. Um, but I found that there's like a lot of cars, maybe like 25% of cars I come across have like cobwebs on it because it hasn't been driven probably for like, m like, you know, two months, May maybe just a month. Maybe I'm over exaggerating a little bit, but uh, the amount of cobwebs are on the rise. And I saw a car where, like, even the door handles had cobwebs on them. And that's that's got to mean it must have been there for a couple months, right? I'm not a spider whisperer or anything, but I think once a spider decides that a door handle is a safe place to live, that's you've probably left your car out for too long. <laughs> I get worried if I don't drive my car for a week, because I'm like, oh god, it's going to get dusty, or something's going to move into my car, because it's convertible, and I'm sure... Any animal would love to live in a convertible, right? Um, I'm sure it's easy to, to get into a convertible. I don't know why I say that, but, you know, the soft top or, I don't know, they'll chew through it or something once they know a human hasn't been near it for a week. But uh, I have to drive my car at least once a week or else I'm afraid uh, something's going to live in it or, you know, that it'll get overrun by cobwebs, like the one third of cars I've been seeing lately. I don't, I don't understand. How are they, I guess they'll just wash their car when they need to clean the cobwebs. But very strange. I feel, I feel like uh, Halloween's come a little bit early because the amount of cobwebs I've seen lately. I've also experienced like the, that awkward moment where you're walking and you know, you're just doing your normal, normal thing. You're walking around the neighborhood, counting how many creepy dolls are in cars, looking at all the cobwebs, you know. What normal people do on walks, looking at spiders, that sort of thing. And you see like a whole family of people coming at you and then you have to like make eye contact with the family and decide whether or not you're going to go onto the street where there's a bunch of cars passing or if they're going to go onto the street or if both of you are just going to pause, wait for all the cars to pass. And then one of you, you still have to decide, one of you has to go onto the street. Usually it's me. I think the unspoken rule is that whoever has the less members of their party has to kind of, you know, diverge from the sidewalk and take the risk. Because <laughs> the majority has got to stay safe. So whenever that happens to me and it's just me and I'm walking and there's like a family on the other side, 
I, I take it upon myself to uh, avoid them because it's probably harder for a family with like kids to all go onto the road safely and try to avoid people. So I think I think I've nailed that new that new society unspoken rule. So I've been doing a lot of that, and then you know I. There's some times where the two parties are have the same amount of people on it. And then I notice usually the people, or at least in my experience, the people who have, uh, have a dog or something will move on to the street. I don't know why. I don't know. I guess dog people are just really, really cour courteous. That's my, uh, that's my understanding. <laughs> that must be the reason. Why they're getting out of my way is because dog people are nice people. So those are just my my observations. And I'm just really bored on walks. I I don't like going on a walk. Maybe if I had a dog, I would I would enjoy it more because I'd be walking for a purpose. But no, just by myself walking around, looking at plants and stuff. <laughs> I don't know if it makes me more or less stir crazy when I get back. It could definitely be having the opposite effect on me, but who knows? Who's to say? Okay, I realize I'm performing fairly poorly, uh, but uh, we haven't dropped down to the forest yet, so I think that, you know, looking at the bigger picture, we are doing well. <laughs> We're doing very well right now. Go, go team. Raw, raw, go team. So, going back to how long this game's gonna take me to beat, uh, I would probably say 30 hours. <laughs> That's gonna be my, my best bet. In which case, we're almost halfway there. <laughs> if I don't beat this game within 30 hours, there might be a problem. That might tell me that I need to just be quiet and focus, but I refuse to until the 30 hours has passed. I've also... Since I've been at home and stuff, playing a lot of video games, I've also been thinking about how much I want to get, like, a, a new tattoo. I think I mentioned this maybe last Jump King stream, uh, but I have two tattoos, and neither of them are video game related, and I really, really want a video game tattoo. Because I've played, you know, I've played video games all of my life, and it has a, a special place in my heart, and I just like uh, getting a new tattoo. I'm itching to get a new one. What is it called? The Tattoo Itch? That, that doesn't sound right. But you guys know what I'm trying to say, right? Um, so I got the Tattoo Itch going on. And <laughs> sometimes I have the crazy thought that I'm like, oh my god, Jump King Tattoo. And then I, th I really think about it. And then if I think about it for more than five minutes, I'm like, ugh, no. <laughs> I can't do that. It, it would have to be something cute or, I don't know. It's, I play so many different games. I can't really commit to like one game. That's why I consider myself a variety streamer. Is because I, I generally don't play a game for more than 40 hours, usually. Um, so I never usually get my worth out of $60 games. So I, I never really buy $60 games because I know I'm not going to play them for that long. Um, so it's, it's hard to decide on something, you know? And I could be basic and get, like, not, not saying anyone's basic out there. Oh no, I'm, like, sh throwing shade on accident. But, uh, I don't, I don't really want, uh, like, a console tattooed on me, even though that could encompass all of the games for that console. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't like the idea of having a console tattooed on me. But if I could find, like, the right symbol or, like, a cute character or something, then I'd be all for it. So I've been trying to find that perfect video game design or something that just catches my eye so I can get it tattooed. Or at least put it on my list so I can, you know, get it priced and then save up for it and whatnot. 
but I have I have not found it yet. I'm, I'm sure it will come to me eventually. And I've mentioned this before, before I ever get a tattoo, I, I try to learn how to draw the tattoo first so I can get an idea of it and then, you know, customize it if I want to. Um, and then I think on it for a couple months. Uh, that, that's generally what I do. Whoop. So I don't end up having second thoughts. Man, this guy bends his knees so much. He, this guy's like the ultimate s squatter. He's really good at squats, let me tell ya. Man, that jump. Back in the stinky, colossal drain again. It's not a sewer, Sierra. It's a drain. Gotta, gotta get that right. In which case, does the drain only connect to this room? In which case, it's it's very dirty for, like, one kitchen. But I guess over time it would look like that. There we go. Ah, the picture, the desert picture eludes me. Alright. Yeah, that desert picture room is a little bit hard for me because I always end up over jumping or something and falling back to the bottom. I've gotten a lot better at this area, though. Gotta say. Not so much this one. <laughs> okay. Hello, grainy picture of uh, the desert that I'd like to believe was done intentionally because it's sand. Oop. So anyways, back to the whole walking thing. I usually walk for like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. So I end up walking a little bit more than a mile. And I, I don't get what people say about, um, you know, feeling good after they exercise. Because I'm just like so tired and winded. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm i not fit at all in, in any, in any uh, you know, sense of the word. <laughs> I eat a lot of sugar and whatnot. I just have a fast metabolism is what, what it is. So I'm hoping that the more that I walk, you know, the same kind of path very often, the better my endurance will be for walking overall. I'm not even running, mind you. It's just, it's just a nice, like, speed walk sort of thing. Um, the hills are what get me, really. But uh, I also take, like, I try to take some breaks. But when I'm walking with my boyfriend, he, he really likes to speed walk the whole time while I'm trying to stop him every second to look at snails or something. Any excuse to, to stop and take a break. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this spider. And he's like, I don't know, over a hundred feet away from me, like telling me to hurry up. I'm like, nope, I'm, I'm looking at this spider. I'm not tired at all. I'm just, I'm just looking on, at this spider for no you know, no energy conservation reason. The spire's just very interesting. And then I just happen to get more energy while I'm standing still. Alright, I don't want to read that town board meeting notice. We'll skip right over that. Alright, what is up with this jump? I was gonna over jump that for a second. I feel like Bargainburg should bother me more than it does, <clears throat> but I do like the design of Bargainburg, so it doesn't it doesn't bother me as much. So this week, in case you guys are wondering what I've been doing, I've been uh, 
I've been doing my masters a little bit, so I've been doing a lot of writing, so that I definitely need to walk around after I write. But I've also been, uh, I picked up uh, Stardew Valley again, and I was downloading some mods, and I, I downloaded this one mod that some people might not agree with, but I downloaded a mod that allows me to track where the NPCs are. Because the one thing that I remembered about Stardew Valley that was so anno annoying was when I needed to turn in an item, but I couldn't be bothered to memorize everybody's schedule, so I'll just wander around the town for like 10 minutes in real time trying to find them. And usually I wouldn't find them, so it would take me like two or three, you know, in-game days to find the person I was looking for. <laughs> it happens a lot, so... I ended up downloading the NPC map sort of thing. It's like one of the most popular downloads, and I can see why. And I downloaded it, and it's like, it is a game changer, it's a lifesaver, it's a time saver as well. And now I know where everybody is at all times. It's fantastic. So, I've been playing a little bit of Stardew Valley. I'm a couple hours into it. Um, <laughs> if you look on my Steam, you'll see that uh, I have 77 hours in Stardew Valley. But what that really means is I have... Hold on, let me, let me see if I can do the math here. It, it basically means I have like 18 7-hour sessions each. I probably started that game more than a dozen st times. Stardew Valley started new save files, like, at least a dozen times. And I only play those save files for, like, 7 to 10 hours before getting bored. So, I've never... I think I've maybe once or twice made it after, uh, year one. But, I don't know, after that I always lose interest. But this time, I'm trying not to lose interest in Stardew Valley and actually, uh... Maybe even make it to year three this time. That's my goal for myself. <laughs> so I've been playing like an hour or two every day. Um, you know, in between in between writing and whatnot. And it's been uh it's been quite relaxing, really. Uh, of course I named my uh farm Sierra Farm. And I continue to name, if there's like something I need to name, like a, a ranch or a town or a village, I call it sea air. Um, you know, as in like ocean air, that kind of thing. Um, because I think it's so clever. And because before I used to call everything hedgehog, hedgehog town. <laughs> Which I don't think, you know, I don't think that's a great name for a town. It's a little bit on the nose. So yeah, it's been it's been going well. I've been trying to decide, even though I only have one heart with everybody in my village. Um, I've been trying to decide who I want to marry in Stardew Valley, because that's obviously why you play the game, right? <laughs> You're trying to pick pick who you want to marry. It's not about building the farm or anything. It's about being able to buy gifts for the per the person you want to uh, wed, and. I always, I, I want to either, before I wanted to either marry Sebastian, which was like the emo kid, or, um, what is his name, Shane, the guy who works at Joja Mart. I realize that if you haven't played Stardew Valley, none of this makes sense. But, uh, I'm trying to actually go for Harvey this time, which is kind of like the good guy doctor. Because when I play dating games, or in this case, I guess like a Harvest Moon kind of game, I always go for like the bad boys, and then I'm mad when I get married to them and they're still mean. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, that's strange. Why are, they, why are they still a jerk? It's because they were always a jerk. So this time I'm going to fight my base instincts and I'm not going to marry Sebastian or Shane in Stardew Valley. I'm going to go for the nice guy doctor who isn't even a crazy doctor, which is what I usually go for <laughs> in other games. <laughs> like, uh, Had a Full Boyfriend, which I did buy, and I date birds in that game. <laughs> not, not ashamed. Maybe a little bit. That's why I won't stream it. <laughs> but I'll play it in the... in, uh, complete silence. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big... I'm a big fan of dating games. I play the mobile dating games. I play PC dating games. It's, that's like my, uh, what's it called? Like my, uh, guilty pleasure is what you'd call it. But I don't know if it makes great 
streaming content. I know some people can pull it off, but it's hard when, uh, you know, you go into a stream and they're halfway through, like, a story that you don't understand. Then you're just, like, lost the whole time. So if I try to play games where you can kind of understand what's going on right away, you don't need any prior knowledge. So I, I try to play story-heavy games by myself. That's generally my my mantra. Would that be the term for it? My mantra. I mean, I guess I made an exception with Life is Strange, but Life is Strange was a great game. In which case, I was just thinking about it the other day because I heard uh, Chloe, Chloe's voice from somewhere. Uh, the person who played Chloe in Life is Strange, I heard her voice in another game. Because I guess she's a fairly popular voice actress, which makes sense. Her voice is great. Um, and I realized I never played, uh, I never finished Life is Strange 2 with like the two boys and whatnot. I don't know. It just wasn't as engaging as the first game, but I gotta finish it at some point. I think I, I stopped streaming it when I got to that lewd point with, uh, you know, what's it called? Skinny dipping in the, in the, in the lake or whatever, and I got nervous about streaming that. <laughs> so I stopped. <laughs> and I never came back. But, uh, I don't know. Now that I look back on it, the story didn't really... I don't know, the story didn't grip me as much as, you know, the Chloe and, uh, Chloe and Max story. In which case, I totally see myself as Max. It's kind of hard to see myself as uh, either of the boy characters in Life is Strange too. So that obviously has a uh, has an effect about how I view the game. I think it gets a little bit of a, a different audience than uh, the original Life is Strange did, which I'm all for. I really, I'm sure it's a great game. I just need to motivate myself to play through it. Oh man, that that darn flagpole. Ooh, that was a little bit of a sketchy jump. That jump's even more sketchy. But yeah, in terms of story though, Life is Strange has gotta be up there for one of my favorite uh you know, story. Obviously story driven games. trying to think of some other games that are really good like story wise hmm I don't know nothing's coming to my head like immediately I'd have to look at all the games I've played previously it's hard for me to remember exactly what I've played I need I need like the visual if I saw like the box art or you know the title of a game I would know whether or not I played it or not I just can't recall it without some sort of uh, visual prompt. I've learned, you know, through my teaching program and just, you know, pursuing more education that I'm a very much like a visual kind of learner, I think. Or at least, you know, visual in the case that I need like words in front of me to read. Like if somebody reads something out loud to me, I usually can't understand fully unless I have the text in front of me myself. Oh, man. Bargainburg. What are you doing to me? <laughs> it's cursed. Okay. As long as I fall there, I'm okay. I think if I jump here, I can get up. Yeah. That's a sweet jump. There we go. Much quicker than before. Oh. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm okay. I let go of the directional pad before things could get too out of hand. was bad that was bad that was a combination of me not putting in a directional input before I jumped and me just walking off the ledge so 
that was totally probably 200% my fault for that that fall we just had a second ago. Yeah. So I think that, you know, in light of me not being able to remember a lot of the games that I played, I think that what really matters for me in terms of, you know, saying what games are my favorite isn't how many hours I put into them, unfortunately, because I don't, I don't usually have the patience nor the time to, uh, put over like a hundred hours into something. Um, but it's more of like how I felt playing it. So like a game like Night in the Woods, for example, I know there's content I haven't seen in Night of the Woods. And even though I really enjoyed it, I probably wouldn't be able to play it again, but it's definitely up there in terms of like some of my favorite story games. Because the characters just felt really, you know, real and authentic and all that good stuff. So even if I haven't played a game for, you know, uh, in an extended period of time or I haven't replayed the game, doesn't mean that it can't be in my top ten list. <laughs> or maybe I just have really low expectations, but I don't think I do. There's a lot of games that I, that I play and then, you know, kind of forget about. While we're still on the topic of story games, of course, I have to mention uh, Little Misfortune. Fantastic game. Absolutely love that game. To pieces. It reminds me of a lot of uh, Stanley's Parable. In which case, I've never played Stanley's Parable myself, but I have seen a lot of people play it, so I feel like I've played it, like, secondhand. Secondhand played it. <laughs> That's why I won't play The Last of Us either, because I've watched somebody play all of it. Or, it's either I watch somebody play all of it, or I watch the cutscenes, so I wouldn't really want to play it myself, because I already know what's going to happen. Oh my gosh, why is this ledge all of a sudden so hard to get to? Excuse me? Oh my gosh. Let me up. <laughs> there we go. How many times can this man hit himself against the wall? The world will never know. Oh man. I'm ra I'm racking up those falling points. <laughs> Wish I could buy some boots with them or something. But now I gotta I still have to catch that crow to get these sick boots for my character. At least I have the hat though. I don't even remember what this guy looks like without a hat on. It's been that long. <laughs> there we go. Very, very nice. Oh, oh, I thought I was going to over jump there for a second. Oh, okay, Where, where's this go? What the heck? Who are you, sir? Excuse me? Oh, this is as far as we've gotten. Hmm? A fellow jumper? How unusual. I salute you for coming this far, but I am afraid this is the end of the road for, y for us. Why do we keep looking up? We're just like... <laughs> Trying to not make eye contact. Just wait until you see what is ahead. I will wait here. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, you just wait here, sir. I'll go see what's ahead. How how do I even get ahead? Ooh, I see the I see the crow with our coin that we need to buy those sweet boots. And we will attempt to catch him in just a second after I go to the bathroom. I will be right back. And you guys get to listen to my new Be Right Back song that took me a very, very long time to find. It, it, was, it was very difficult. I, I need to find, like, a website where I can, like, easily get MP3 songs that aren't copyrighted. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this new BRB song. I'll be, in. I'll be right back. <laughs> enjoy.
guys, I'm back. Thanks for waiting for me. Did you guys enjoy the song? I, I kind of forgot what it was. <laughs> so I was listening to it on my phone when I left. And it's it's very smooth. I, I like it a lot. It's very kind of like, uh, I don't know. It's not electric dance music, but it kind of is. But uh, I like EDM that doesn't have the bass drop. It's very like kind of relaxing, something you could listen to in a coffee shop, I'd like to think. Anyways, it... It took me an embarrassing amount of time to find that song, so hopefully it continues to work out for me. <laughs> Anyways, this guy wants us to keep going forward, and uh, he says it's not going to work out, so we'll, we are going to go ahead and prove him wrong right now. Right this very moment. Uh, in which case... Oh, when I first started, there was another also attempting... Please don't tell me you used to be a young man when you started jumping. Needless to say, he didn't get as far. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you for that that uh, confidence you have instilled in me. Uh, so my current predicament is now that I made it here, how do I make it all the way over there to that platform on the left side? Because I feel like my head is going to get... I'm going to hit my head on this roof that my character is now looking up at <laughs> very conveniently. Um, yes, that roof. Uh, so maybe I should just jump back down and then jump to the left? I think the platform is here. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't. The answer is, is that it wasn't. Oh, man. Alright, it's that jump. That jump in the snowy area that gets me. I mean, at least characters are being a little bit nicer to me now. When I was at the beginning area and I ran into that guy in the forest, <clears throat> he started making fun of me after a while. Now I'm getting the respect I deserve, I say as I fall all the way back down to Berg Parkenburg. <laughs> Professional jumper coming through. Oh my god. <laughs> what What is that saying? Uh, you know, that uh, pride is... Is my foley? I don't know. I think I just made that up right now. But pride is my foley. Once I once I start getting too uh, confident, too prideful, I get kicked all the way back down. I obviously need to invest in some more points in uh, skill when I play Bloodborne. So that skill will then translate to uh, Jump King. That's how it works. Obviously, this game senses the stats that you put in other games on Steam. And that's how well you perform, of course. Now, would people say that this game is easier or getting over it is easier? Because by the looks of getting over it, that game looks harder than this one. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're both the same difficulty. I guess I'll find out if I ever play <laughs> Getting Over It. I can do a comparison of the two. Obviously, you fall. You can fall all the way back down to the bottom in both games. But I don't know which one is easier and which one's harder. Like, will I be, like, really good at uh, Getting Over It once I beat this game? <laughs> Probably not. Because <laughs> it's two different games. But I'd like to to think so. My patience can get me through anything. <laughs> I could be the jump king and I can also be the the climb the climb king at the same time. In which case the only thing that's gonna be harder in getting over it is getting mocked by the narrator every couple of minutes after falling, and I fall a lot. <laughs> Not only am I the Jump King, I am also, consequently, the Fall King as well. <laughs> Alright. Don't worry, Flagpole, I'm gonna get up there eventually. <laughs> Not today. Did that flag move in a different direction? No, it doesn't. Okay. I thought it moved from, like, the left to the right for a second. I think I'm just going, just going crazy. 
Maybe that's how you'll know the wind is blowing once we get to the snowy area. Because I heard the snowy area is hard because you have to jump whenever the wind blows a certain direction. And that extra timing function of it is what really gets uh, annoying. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how annoyed I really get. I do, I do uh, generally not like being told when I can jump though. <laughs> I follow no rules, as you can see. <laughs> I follow my own rules and I fall constantly. There we go. I also realized, um, after playing some PS2 games, quite a few PS2 games, I'll have to update you guys about what's in my collection. Because I found some games, and I also might have gotten some more uh, cheap games. Uh, but I noticed that a lot of older games have, like, you know, the whole game is timed. And that stuff stresses me out. I don't... <laughs> I forgot how stressful being timed is to complete a level. And when the game's all about just being timed, oh my gosh, I get... I, I can't play, like, more than, like, 30 minutes of a game like that. Because I'm like, <gasps> I'm like, I can't, I, I can't hit zero. Something bad's gonna happen if the timer hits zero and I'm not at the finish line. It just, you know. I know, uh, realistically in my head, I know I just have to start over. But the whole time limit gets me all kinds of worried. <laughs> and I don't want to play it as much. Because um, I got the game, uh, The Adventures of Cookies and Cream. So cute, cute game, but uh, the time limit, oh my gosh, every time you die, which is a lot, because it's from the creators of Dark Souls, from Software Made, uh, The Adventures of Cookies and Cream, uh, every time you die, the time goes down, and you have to like do puzzles and stuff, and obviously if you're going through a level for the first time, you don't know what the puzzle's gonna be. So it's one of those games, it's a co-op game too. Uh, it's one of those games where you have to play it a couple of times and get to a certain point and figure out what the puzzle is and then the time runs out and then you have to do it all over again. So, it's, uh, I have only played it once because of that. Even though I know I should play it more, it's, when I was a kid I don't think it bothered me as much. But now that I've forgotten that time limits exist and I've rediscovered them now as an adult, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like being timed. If I didn't see the timer, it would probably make it better. 